My name is Morgan Reynolds. I'm a professor emeritus at Texas A&M University and the former chief economist under George W. Bush, 2001-2002. Yes, a Republican appointee. I've also worked for a think tank in Dallas called the National Center for Policy Analysis. I have three degrees from the great University of Wisconsin at Madison and uh, was invited up recently to give a 9-11 talk and uh, my theme was President Bush, come out with your hands up. You're under arrest. The people demand your trial for treason on 9-11. 9-11, uh, on 9-11 I'd been one week on the job in the Bush administration. It started on September 4. And I, I, I didn't know about 9-11 until my son emailed me from Kansas City of all places and said, Dad, are you getting out of the building? I said, what is he talking about? I went uh, to an office uh, three doors away. I saw the television on. I saw black smoke billowing, billowing out of a tower and I said, pointed to it. That building will not fall. Count on a, an economist for a quick and easy prediction. That the rest of the day I spent, uh, or half a day, trying to get across the river back to my apartment in Alexandria. And then when, the, when the, I learned that the towers both had uh, turned to dust, I, I said, how can that happen? I, I don't get it. I was wrong. And so many people were wrong. I put it on the, on the back burner, never thinking that the, the, the Bush administration could have been involved or commit the, the atrocities of 9-11. I worked for uh, nearly 16 more months before I resigned. And then, when they invaded Iraq, I knew it was on uh, big lies. Everybody in town, meaning Washington, D.C., really knew it. Uh, they wouldn't own up to it or do anything about it. They're cowards or traitors or, or both. And I said, geez, uh, if they're going to lie their way into a war in the Middle East, what else would they lie about? And that started me thinking right away about 9-11. I started searching around. So during the course of 2003, I learned they'd done it. And by the time I read uh, David Ray Griffin's The New Pearl Harbor, I said, wow, David's done it right. He's put it together in a way that appealed to me as an academic. And uh, uh, the rest is history. I first began to suspect that 9-11 was an inside job um, in March of 2003 when the Bush-Cheney government invaded Iraq. Prior to that, I I'd, I'd, I'd just uh, watched the Bush administration make a series of policy decisions that uh, I w was opposed to, beginning with uh, the tariffs on steel. I'm a free market economist, explains that. And uh, the, the horrible legislation on restricting campaign spending and a whole series of things I didn't like. And uh, firing uh, Paul O'Neill, uh, for example, who's an honorable man, a former Secretary of the Treasury, et cetera. So I was ready to leave after one year, but for personal reasons stayed on another four months. So I left January 3, uh, 2003. And then during the year of 2003, I had time on my hands. I could pursue whatever issue I did, wanted to as a research scholar. What's more important than 9-11? Here's the, the um, we'll call it the moderate but ugly take on the whole administration. The whole focus was to re-elect George W. Bush. Every calculation was short-term political smarts. Never, we never, I never was in a room uh, with a conversation about what was the best policy for the country. And then once we decide that, what's the best way to sell it? It was always about re-electing the, the president. It was craven. It was about uh, George W. Bush avoiding the heirs of Poppy and being re-elected because uh, it was just a crushing thing for Poppy not to be re-elected. One of the uh, things that amuses me is that uh, the wimp charge was going to be avoided at, at all costs. So uh, the George W. Uh, Bush uh, bow-legged swagger it, all Texan, you know, it's all buckle, it's all hat, and no ranch, no cattle. <laughs> it was just, it's just, it, it's so affected, uh, it, just his strut. The, the biggest smoking gun uh, then and now is WTC7. How can anyone watch it without some kind of a psyop or a verbiage accompanying it and not look at that and say, hey, that building was just demolished, just the way... The, the, the uh, Las Vegas Sands uh, was, or the Seattle uh, Stadium, etc. Just, 
you, you, there's no way around that. Here we are in uh, so-called broad daylight. It's 5.20 p.m. and we've got cameras on it. And uh, what other explanation can there be for this uh, very conventional looking collapse when under seven seconds? There's, there's just, that just has a crime inside job written all over it. And that was the f uh, first thing that struck me was it's always about New York City, the World Trade Center. What happened there? How could this have been uh, accomplished by uh, Anya, it's, uh, Osama, and 19 young Arabs? It can't be. Well, uh, you could argue that it was a compact uh, number of conspirators, but it's the most fantastic, it's the most ludicrous. And as uh, Jim Garrison, <clears throat> the former district attorney of New Orleans, wrote in his book on JFK called On the Trail of the Assassins, the story did not wear well. The whole lone uh, assassin theory about uh, Lee Oswald uh, killing the president when it was a military style hit, it was an in your face, very much like 9-11, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. You, you people are nobody. We are everybody. So uh, they, they, it's not going to wear well. Uh, Garrison pointed out that uh, only a minority of Americans initially doubted the government story. But by 1967, only four years later, two out of three, according to national polls, doubted the official lone assassin theory. We have the same process underway on 9-11. The, so, the story is so ridiculous, it can't, it's not going to wear well. It's not wearing well already. Hubris is their weak point. Uh, when you're, you're on top this many uh, generations, in some cases, where it runs in families, uh, witness our current president, uh, when you're on top, when, when money is, comes that easy, when you're not, uh, you don't really identify with the struggles of ordinary people. Uh, Katrina, the post events there, um, might have changed some journalists' minds about how cavalier uh, people at the top of our government are about uh, American lives. Uh, the, the casualness, the coldness of, of FEMA there outed them a bit. And now, of course, we have all the, the evidence uh, we need to show that they lied their way into a major war and uh, well over 100,000 people have been killed. So the, the coldness, the hubris, the arrogance, it, it's a human um, uh, fallibility or fault or vice to, to uh, just overplay your hand ultimately. There's almost no uh, prudence in, in what they're doing. It, it's not gone as smoothly as they expected because uh, number one, their cover story is weak. They have the complicity, uh, number two, of the corporate media, yet mostly silencio uh, rather than errors of commission, even though they, we get uh, leaked breakthroughs every once in a while, like uh, Charlie Sheen. Uh, but the, the overall uh, thing that I point to is the internet. Here we have these uh, high-tech uh, professional killers involved, and yet they uh, severely underestimated the power of the internet. We wouldn't be here uh, today meeting in Chicago if it weren't for the internet, I don't believe. And we have just, there's too many sharp people, some of them in this room, who are just waiting to pounce on them. Uh, they, it's hard for them to manufacture evidence uh, after the fact because we, we've, we've kicked them on every substantive account. We're going to have a debate. We have a debate scheduled coming up here uh, uh, September 16 with the scholars uh, represented by me and six others, including David Ray Griffin and uh, Phil Berg and Jim Fetzer. And uh, I don't expect the other side to show. So we're just going to put up mannequins and, and put uh, little cartoon bubbles above them about what their answer is. C-9-11 Commission. C-9-11 Commission for a uh, fictional story about what happened. So. Uh, they, they just refused to debate. We saw that when um, Alex Jones uh, turned up the Charlie uh, Sheen story, and by the third night they had to shut it down because they, uh, for one reason they couldn't get anybody respectable to take the government side. We can prove uh, our analysis, we can prove that the government uh, story is false, and uh, we have a philosophical proposition we can repair to, namely, you cannot prove a lie. So they cannot prove uh, what uh, they contend.